Are you having breast lumps? Do you have multiple breast lumps in both your breasts? Do you have abnormal nipple discharge? Do you get pain in your breasts inter in the intermenstrual period? Do you get abnormal bleeding from your breasts? Don't worry. All these symptoms doesn't necessarily mean that you are having breast cancer. Hello friends, this is your friend Dr. Orbho Basu, gastro and cancer surgeon, welcoming you all to our one more interesting episode of our healthy chit chat on breast lump and benign breast diseases. Welcome. Hello friends, this is Dr. Orbho Basu, gastro and cancer surgeon, welcoming you all to a very interesting episode of your own YouTube channel Arogdom where we discuss various gastro cancer and surgery related problems and try to help our patients and viewers with accurate and state-of-the-art medical guidance even at personal level. Often I get ladies who come rushing to my chamber in running condition and just states me that Dr. Saab, mere dono side ka breast mein bohat bade bade gaat ho gaya hai. Am I having breast cancer? Am I going to die? I have little children with me and or I have been married just for two years. Kya hoga mera? Don't be afraid. All breast lumps or breast related problems doesn't necessarily mean that you are having breast cancer. Now let's first discuss what is a breast actually. A breast in uh, gross terms is actually a mound made up of fatty tissue and glands. There are two types of tissues. The fatty tissue forms the maximum part of the breast which gives volume to the breast and the glandular tissue are actually they are called lactiferous glands in medical terms which leads to which helps us in milk productions. The breasts are rudimentary or very small in case of male animals or uh, uh, whether they are engorged or enlarged and functional in case of females because the lactational process takes place only in females. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that only females will be having breast related problems. Males can also suffer from breast related problems as well, but definitely with a lesser extent. We will uh, be discussing about both of them. Now, breast is such a structure which has a continuously changing architecture. Why is it changing? Because in females, breast and genitalia including the ovary, uterus and reproductive organs are under hormonal control. These hormones are responsible for the femaleness or the womanhood of a lady. Now the level of these hormones is continuously changing. These hormones are like FSH, LH, prolactin, even testosterone and dihydroepiandrosterone like that so on and so forth. They are purely technical. These are the hormones which control controls uh, the maleness expression and femaleness expression in one individuals. Now the thing is, the, these hormone levels are totally different in case of males and females. But in case of females also, the uh, hormonal milieu or the ratio of these hormones is never constant. If I take 10 uh, different girls, each of them will be having different ratio or different setup of hormones and even in the same girl, the ratio of these specific hormones changes on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. So naturally, the architecture, the size, the shape, the consistency of breasts will naturally change on a day-to-day -day basis. It is not a consistent factor. So don't worry. Hato ka paanch ungli jaise saman nahi hota hai, aapka breast ka size, shape, architecture bhi kabhi saman nahi rahega. If you notice properly, you can see that aapka breast ka structure or consistency the sal ke umar mein jaisa tha, it is not the same when you are 20 years old. It again changes when you are 30 years old and again it won't be the same when your age increases and progresses. In case of young females, the lactiferous tissues are more active, the patients are uh, mostly having dense breasts. Whereas in case of perimenopausal period, when the patient is approaching menopause, the ho female hormones are feeding, the breast becomes thinner. So naturally this consistency will be changing. So don't think that whatever is happening to your breast is actually a disease. Now let me come to the disease part. Most of the pre-pubertal or peripubertal girls come to me 
with very small swellings in their breasts. It can be one sided, it can be both sided. But these swellings are called fibroadenomas or breast mice. Why breast mice? Because these swellings are slippery. Whenever you try to squeeze the swelling, the swelling uh, appears to squeeze out of your hand to another part of the breast. That is why they are called breast mice. Now, whenever a patient is having that breast mice or fibroadenoma, invariably that patient is having multiple small nodules or glandular structures in her breasts. So what are they? This is actually previously they were called fibrocystic disease or FCD. Nowadays, all these diseases are included in a uh, common term which is called ND or aberration for normal development and involution of breasts because this is continuously changing. Nobody can formulate or hypothesize, hypothesis, uh, <coughs> hypothesis sakta hai ki, no, this is the constant structure of breast. This is the ideal structure of breast. Uh, aisa hi hona that is never the, it is never the same. So whenever a girl is growing, a girl is going uh, through hormonal changes, her breasts are also going to change naturally. If the patient is having fibrocystic disease, the breasts usually become a little bit of coarse, a little bit of hard and having multiple small swellings. Now, in case of fibrocystic disease, we do not operate at an early stage. We try to treat the patient with evening primrose oil or advise the patients to use uh, a nice uh, supportive brassier mostly sports brassiers or the, the brassiers having cupped ones so that the breasts do not fall down do not sag down otherwise due to effect of gravity there will be mastalgia or breast pains which will further aggravate the disease and in case the swelling or the fibroadenoma has grown more than two centimeter that is the only case where we operate because once a fibroadenoma has become more than two, two centimeter it cannot be further reduced through medications. Uh, in that case, we have to operate, but while operating, we have to keep some other things in mind also. Because the patient is young, the patient is most probably unmarried. So we have to maintain the cosmetic appearance of the breast as well. So whenever we are removing a breast, a large breast fibroadenoma, we have to repair that defect also in the form of some plastic surgical procedures or mammoplasty so that the size and shape of the both the breasts remain symmetrical and it looks good it uh, becomes attractive and it doesn't cause the patient to regret ki maine kyun operation karwaya so we have to take care of the cosmetic part as well now in case of a little bit older patients uh, we get breast swellings which are large which are reddened the patient is having fever, the patient is having excruciating pain in one or both breasts and typically the patient is lactating. That is, the patient is feeding her baby. This is typical breast abscess. Whenever a baby is suckling from uh, her mother's nipples, usually some, mi anti some microbia microbes or bacteria evades the uh, patient's breast lactiferous glands from the baby's mouth. And this ultimately leads to a collection of pus or abscess inside the patient's breast, leading to breast abscess. Now, its treatment is very easy. You have to take the patient in the OT and drain the abscess by uh, usual rules of draining abscess. But it should be a anti-gravity, should not be a anti-gravity drainage. Because otherwise, the patient will be having a persistently uh, discharging sinus tract and the patient should be given broad spectrum antibiotics uh, which will kill the bacteria but at the same time you have to keep in mind that the patient is lactating. So these antibiotics uh, usually goes to the baby's body also through breast milk from other breast. So it should not be so harmful that it will be the antibiotic selection should be in a good way so that it is not going to harm the baby as well during that lactational period. Please listen to the video till the very end so that you don't miss any vital point and at last where I will share with you the links how you can get in touch with me and get personalized advice and guidance. Now we will go to the treatment and further discussions part but before that 
इफ यू आर एंजॉइंग दिस शो एंड अगर आपको कोई बेनिफिट मिल रहा है तो प्लीज ये चैनल को सब्सक्राइब कर लीजिए एंड बेल आइकॉन को प्रेस कर दीजिए सो दैट यू विल गेट नोटिफिकेशन एवरी टाइम वी पोस्ट अ वीडियो एंड दिस विल गिव मी एंड माय टीम ए ह्यूज इंस्पिरेशन फॉर आवर हार्ड वर्क थैंक यू नाउ विदाउट एनी फर्दर डिले लेट्स डाइव डीप इन द प्रॉब्लम एंड हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू टैकल इट नेक्स्ट वी ऑफन एनकाउंटर ब्रेस्ट लम्प्स where the patient comes to us running uh, with tearful eyes that i am having such a hard lump in my breast it has involved my entire breast now am i having breast cancer are you going to remove my entire breast then what will happen to my female hood what will i leave with my husband won't love me any more like that don't be afraid all breast lumps are not breast cancers even if they are hard always go for a needle biopsy fnac or true cut biopsy i have seen numerous patients on whom i have performed a true cut biopsy beforehand without doing ot and the biopsy report has come out to be tuberculosis yes tuberculosis tuberculosis is such a disease which can affect entire human body all the cells in human body are susceptible to infection by tuberculosis and if the patient is actually having tuberculosis you just give her 6 or 9 months anti tubercular drugs breast will be normal the patient will be normal and the patient will be having a normal sexual and reproductive life and she will be having a happy married life altogether so don't hurry whenever you are uh, getting a breast lump don't uh, operate at first instance first diagnosis diagnosis is the most important part in our treatment sometimes in excess hurry we try to miss the diagnosis and the patient has to uh, face the consequences throughout her entire life now these are the common benign problems that we encounter in breast other than these there are n number of benign swellings benign matlab it is a tumor but it won't spread to any other place in the body so this is a good tumor once you operate the tumor is not going to come back not going to spread to any other part of the body and you are cured completely but in case of male breasts uh, whenever we see a swelling it is in most of the instances a breast cancer which is very uncommon in case of males uh, male people usually do not pay much heed to their breasts but breast cancer in males is an emerging concept and evolving concept and as per recent reports huge number of male breast cancer patients are also reported not only in india but from the rest of the world as well including the western countries as we know that breast cancer mostly occurs in uh, developed countries and it occurs more in females of upper and middle socio economic status so if you are having a history of cancer in the family if you are having a first degree relative with breast cancer or any other kind of cancer you should be aware but whenever you are getting a lump don't panic that i am having breast cancer we are here to help you out so whenever you are having a lump rush to your doctor get a needle biopsy done and whatever the report comes get your treatment accordingly why are you afraid of what are you ashamed of but please don't suppress the fact and please go to proper doctors who have proper knowledge and experience in this field and please don't visit quacks you can get connected with me and follow my posts videos and blogs in my social handles given in the description box just below if you want a personal consultation with me please whatsapp or call in the following numbers my team members will personally get in touch with you as soon as possible